Hello, Comic Con. How are we feeling? Good. We're going to get straight onto it. I've got three beautiful people to introduce from the Doctor Who fandom, all embarrassingly white. I do apologize. The first from the den of the nerds is Jack Devage. Next, from an awful, awful podcast. He named it himself, it's not my fault. It's Jack Alexander. And lastly, who knew? Good question. Let's ask Josh Carr. So, quick explanation on what we are planning on doing. We're going to split this up into three segments. The first about 60th anniversary news, which I'm sure we're all excited for. The second will be battles in fandom, where we're going to be arguing about things that realistically don't matter. And last but not least, we're going to be doing the Corridor of Fame, where we're going to nominate people from either the show or the community to be placed writers. I'm sorry. Are we okay, Scaro? No, come on, don't Here be shy. Are. Oh That's no. It. Get in, get in. Oh, Here they come. Not again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Daleks! <laughs> this. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. No, don't compliment them. They don't deserve it. <laughs> Explain myself. This is no. actually terrifying. I can't. It is oh. scary, isn't it? I don't it's like amazing. Grabber. Honestly, Ooh, they're really out. intimidating. <laughs> They've not come in peace, according to the Red, no. Any oh, there's Davros. Oh, yeah, yeah, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Come on, your mates at the back want to go. I can see Dalek Scar, he's practically gagging for it. Come on, pal. This is the campus that Davros has Ladies ever looked. Davros himself has come. Whoop, whoop. Tokyo <laughs> drifting into Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got a bomb. How did he get past security? <laughs> Yeah, I see ya. Dalek Scar. <laughs> My god. Beautiful. Oh, he called me a loser. I bowed to you. You know what? That's that's uncalled for. Like, and you're just sitting there Awful. and But defend me. You're the doctor. Okay. Right, you Scar, it's time for you to get lost, I think. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is. Make you. I'll push you. <laughs> <laughs> wimp. The Dalek's having an allergic reaction. Absolute wimp. It's like when I you touch the Genesis arc, it's just, he's going to burn. <laughs> Correct. <Nice. laughs> oh. Yeah, hello, Davros. Always a pleasure. I look forward to defeating you for about the 24th time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm a goner. Oh, no. I didn't even get to plug the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of it. <laughs> get out of it, you scar. This one didn't even get a turn. Yeah, retreat. Retreat. <laughs> so, we are going to get one last round of applause for the Daleks. They do deserve it. That Emperor Dalek is spectacular, and so are them all. So, without further ado, we're going to start with our first segment, my friends. And there will also be a Q&A at the end, so think of questions, Doctor Who related, and we can head over to that microphone there. But that won't be for a little bit long. So, I'm going to hand it over to the lovely Jack Debbage. Give him a hand. Woo! Thank you, everyone. Well, I just realised, you know what year this is? It's the 60th anniversary. Oh, is my it? God. I know. I'm blown away. But... The three specials. We got the Star Beast. We got the Wild Blue Yonder. I think and so. We've got the Giggle. So the Giggle. The Giggle. The giggle. How do we giggle. think about the Giggle? It's a strange oh, we title, got one isn't clap. it? <laughs> one. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange title, but I want to know what's everyone thinking so far from what we've seen from the six of specials. I Woo! mean. I think I think it's obviously very fair to say the first one is going to be all about beat the meat, which beat is beat the meat, beat the yeah. meat, pick up beat the meat, yeah. Woo! To beat Woo! the meat. Which I mean, if you told me five years ago we get beat the meat in the actual TV show, I would have said, well, who's beat the meat? Yeah, yeah, so I had no idea. That's exactly either. what I would have said. Yeah, I think yeah, most same. people would. <laughs> 
so I think it's it's great to see that we're going to have sort of part of the EU, uh, ex, you know, sort of exploring the actual TV show again, which is quite nice and adapted in this sense. So I mean, I'm interested to see where that goes. I I don't think we're going to any more any multi doctor stuff for a start. Oh really? I don't think we are. Not even Matt Smith. No. Oh. It hurts me to say it. Oh. It hurts oh. me so much. Oh. I think. I think we are. I think we're getting Matt Smith. I think Capaldi's a stretch. Yeah. Mm. I think, and I think maybe if, maybe a couple of classics. Yeah. Maybe. I'm optimistic. Okay. I think we're going to get a wild time. Mm. I think we're going to get a lot of a lot of familiar faces coming yeah. back. Yeah. Jody. Do you think maybe Jody? Jody could be. Oh, I love Hands up, who back. thinks another Doctor other than Tennant will appear in the 60th? Show of hands. Oh, oh, oh. Hands down. Hands down if you think it's I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. To be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hands down if you think it's Jody. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how we go. I think it's going to be Hartnell somehow. Uh, Ouija board. Either by lovely. David Bradley or by Dark Magic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is the only way <laughs> it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Seem like appear as a phantom. That could happen. Yeah. That could happen. Mm. <laughs> Well, we've uh, discussed our general theories about the 60th. What's been the overall th thoughts of the footage that we've seen so far? The trailers are great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The trailers are very exciting. Um, I, it's, it's exciting that we're getting quite a lot of stuff um, compared to, to previous years. Yeah. You know, we're, we're getting quite a lot of promotional material and a lot of announcements, but we still don't really know anything like Special 2. We, do, we know nothing about it. We've got no footage. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that's really exciting. That's really exciting. And we've got footage of Beep the Meep. I'm just going to keep talking about Beep the Meep because yeah. I can't believe it's happening. Beep this is now meep. a Beep the Meep panel. <laughs> yes. yeah. If you are not on board, you may leave at any point. <laughs> <laughs> this is now only Beep the Meep. Well, no, and truly. No, I think, I think that is really exciting to think that we know so much about the 60th, but then we actually know so little yeah. at the same time because, yeah, we have that... Mm second special where we know nothing. We were saying this at the time when Ben Beat the Meat was, annou was announced, or not even announced, we just saw the pictures and we're like, is that Beat the Meat? What is happening? It's, well, they could be doing that stuff there whilst they're recording the most fantastical, amazing multi-doctor adventure in a studio around the corner, but we're just all looking at that crazy little star beast. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Beat the Meat's not even in it. Complete smoke screen. It's Matt Smith in that suit. Yeah. Oh, imagine. <laughs> imagine. He takes it off. Hello, everybody. It's me. It, that'd be the best. And you know what? I love your segues into your impressions. It's all I've got, Josh. <laughs> it's all I have. You know what, though? I, I kind of like how we've all kind of collectively decided that Neil Patrick Harris is playing the Celestial Toy Maker. I don't think he is. Oh, oh really? really? You have yeah. to go against us, Josh. I do, yeah. <laughs> I do. And I think that could be a smoke screen. Okay. Really? Definitely. Okay. And I don't know who he is. Okay. He got, he's know, Neil Patrick I have no Harris. Theories I to <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe he's playing the actor, Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, I mean, that would be breaking the fourth wall. He could be the master, because, you know. If he's the master, I'm out immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm done with that We've man. We've had a lot of master. Yeah, we love we the have. master. Years, don't get yeah. me wrong, we love him, but give him a rest. Yeah. yeah. Just let him, Ooh. you know. Lie in a regeneration Could cemetery. Could be the Rani. Rani. Yeah. It's always the Rani. Yeah, the Rani. It's always, always the, Rani. the Rani. Honestly, if there's any man actor that could do it, <laughs> Neil oh, Patrick yeah. Harris could oh. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Woo, whoop. So, to kind of move on and look at the future, obviously in the six of specials, we'll see the debut of the new Doctor, the new new Doctor, Shooty Gatwar as Woo. well. Oh yeah, Whoa, that's Shooty. That's exciting. You know. Uh, I don't know how he's going to appear. Is it going to be a hallucination? Is it going to be he's going to share a few scenes with Tennant? Or I it's got to be the Edge. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah. If it's not Guardians of the Edge, I'd be shocked. Yeah, I think mm. he's actually going to be playing Ken from Barbie. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Get that Barbie movie plug in. I'm glad you've mentioned that. Now we can segue into the Barbie segment of this panel. <laughs> change the gra change the graphics yeah. to the Barbie graphics now, guys. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I think, you know, with Shooty appearing in the 60th as well, you know, there's a lot of focus on, you know, what is kind of viewed by the public as Doctor Who's golden age, you know, with Tennant, Catherine Tay, a lot of, you know, familiar faces, but also looking forward to the future. And I want to know, like, 
What do you think Shooty will bring to the role as we look towards the future? I mean, an audience is the main thing. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, Jody's era brought in such a new fan base, as did Tennant, as did Smith, as did even Capaldi. Yeah. But mm. Shooty's stardom is huge in comparison because even Tennant, when he was cast, he was known. He was in Harry Potter and such. Mm. Yeah. But, like, Shooty is so much bigger th now than Tennant was when he started. I oh, know. So yeah. the interest, I can't wait to see the ratings, basically, when it happens, which sounds even nerdier than what we we're already talking about. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to see the ratings. But it's, I'm very excited to see how it changes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, like, like you say, the audience is going to be the big thing. And I've already seen people that are big fans of his previous work be like, oh, well, I'm going to watch Doctor Who for, for shooting now. And I think that's fantastic to have that new influx of people that can go back and fall in love with the show like many of us did back in 2005, for example. You know, he can be there, Chris Eccleston, which was... It's fantastic. Oh, seeing that for the first yeah. time. Oh, and it's beautiful. it's not just Shooty bringing new... I feel like every casting announcement yeah. is bringing an entirely new audience with it. Yeah. Like, you've got... Uh, like even, even Millie Gibson. Like, people who are tuning in to watch Coronation Street every mm. night. Yeah. You know, they might go, oh, you know, I'm going to see what she does. Um, and Jinx Monsoon coming in and get, bringing in all the people from RuPaul's Drag Race. The Rani. And the Rani. Rani it's going to be the Rani. <laughs> If it's but not, I'd be shocked. Yeah, <laughs> Jonathan Groff is the Rani. Jonathan Groff as oh, well. Actually, oh, yes. Yeah, so All in on Jonathan Groff Rani. Yeah. <laughs> Clean sweep. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's so many big names coming in, and you know we've got we've got some really good directors lined up as well. We don't know much about the writing staff, but I just think even if I, I'm I'm sure I'll have issues with it, like I have with every era of Doctor Who, but. I think it's going to be the m most widely appealing series of Doctor Who that's been on since since probably the, the Eccleston and Tennant eras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Totally, totally. So, just to round up everything then, are you guys excited for the future of Doctor Who? No. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'm very excited for Peach Doctor Who. I... To think that, number one, we have David Tennant back, you know, my childhood doctor, and watching that with him returning with Catherine Tate is already fantastic. But then also to think that this total revival of the show in the sense that it's going to be revolutionary when Shooty comes in. I think it really is. I think we're going to see it everywhere. So, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm also very, very excited. Yeah, I'm excited for a little bit of fan service this year. Yeah. Celebrate the 60th, get a few old faces back for a few specials, uh, and you know there's loads of other things going on. Like we're getting loads of expanded universe stuff that I'm excited for, um, and then next year just kick off into this mad new era um, oh yeah. of you know Doctor Who on on Disney. That's going to be weird. <laughs> but, yeah. I know Doctor Who on Disney Plus. Who would have yeah. thought? Mickey Mouse cameo? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Could happen. I heard a groan and a no. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, can't argue with that. Is, is that? Yes. Okay, well, we can move on to the next segment called Battles in Fandom. Give it up for Jack Alexander. Ooh. Thank you. Yes. Uh, an awful lot of running, which I'm wearing here, our very first piece of merch, Cheeky is a, uh, <laughs> it's a discussion-based podcast where myself and my co-host Robin talk about lots of things, Doc 2, we review things, but we also do a debate-style show. If anyone watched Movie Fights back in the day, we've not ripped that off at all and made it about Doctor Who. Do not send their lawyers our way, but we do something like that now where we pose the Doc 2 debate question and then we have Whovians debate it and basically try and kill each other in the uh, fight, as it were. So yeah, uh, we've got some questions for you today, uh, boys. Oh. And oh. we're going to do things in a very sort of speed round sort of way. So it's going to be whoever I come to first is going to have their question. For, is basically have the question. So the first question, if we come to it now, after that one, thank you. Here you go. So which of the big three villains, Daleks, Cybermen, the Master, should be retired until the 70th anniversary. Now, before I come to you all, let me show you what you'll be winning today if you do win our three rounds. A golden figure of David Tennant. Beautiful. Ooh. If I Very don't nice. win that, I'm going to be mad at myself. 
and a golden figure of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Ah, oh, beautiful. I am Lord and to, Savior. <laughs> I am going to provide zero context for this. You have to listen to the podcast. Just, <laughs> just so you know, I'm livid at that. And if you, <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, you will know why. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to come to you, Jack. Okay. First. That does not, not, you, not narrow it down. There's three Jacks. We need, so, to, we need to differentiate. You are going to get 20 seconds to present your initial argument okay. to everyone here. I might just say, I'm going to ask you all to help me on the judging of these today because... Vote me. I want those figures, man. <laughs> because my judging has often been called into question. So today, I can blame it on all of you. Oh, getting that timer ready. Right, yes, timer is ready. He's just on his phone. Let's see how bored these people are, they're just walking by. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, you got a baby. It's unacceptable. Okay. So, what's your answer first of all before you start? The Cybermen. Right. Boo. And you have 20 seconds for initial argument. Go. Because they're always paired with the master. I mean, that pretty much sums it up because they're not given enough time to shine and there's always, you know, the same ideas, the same tropes that are being, you know, told. And I feel like giving them a much needed rest, allow them to come back on their own, that's the best thing for them to do. Have them show up the 16th Stop, quarter. stop, stop. Just Very made it. Good. Okay. Josh, I'm going to come to you next. Hello. So, what's your answer? Um, I'm going to say the master. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> your 20 seconds starts now. We've seen the master so many times over the past few years. We've had uh, three different incarnations in the past eight or so years. I feel like it's a little bit too much. And also, I think the character itself would benefit from a little bit of a break. And also, you know, the master is always paired with the Cybermen. So give exactly. the Cybermen a bit of time to shine instead. Stop. I feel teamed up here now. <laughs> you two have teamed up. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> So, Jack, you're uh, obviously left with the final villain, that being the Daleks. I'm, I, if I die now, they're all looking at me now. <laughs> Game on. Let's do it. Right, your 20 seconds starts now. I'm not going to argue that the Daleks are not iconic. I mean, look at them. They're absolutely gorgeous. But do you remember that time during sort of Series 5, Series 7? We were sick of those things. All the bronze Daleks. Give them 10 years off. Bring them back with a brand new design or the paradigm. For the love of God, please bring back the paradigm. And then we'll be love them again. Imagine that. Fresh faces, fresh eyes. Stop. Don't even need 20 Stop. seconds. Didn't even need Order. <laughs> Stop. You can't just chat nonsense and try and convince people by standing up. Uh, Josh. Yes, yes, Josh. Like that. Energy. Order. Order. I've got tired legs. Josh. Ah, oh, you will be disqualified. Right. Ouch. I should say to you all now. This will be based on the argument, not which pick you think is best. You have to base it on who you think has the best argument, okay? Boys, you'll have two minutes now to have a very mini, mini debate fight. Your okay. time starts now. Okay. Can we turn this into a physical fight? No. Oh, okay. boy. I'm I don't want to lose. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Um, the Daleks are iconic, as you said. And the Daleks, I think, are probably one of the villains that you could bring back and you can always do something a little bit fresh with them i feel like the master's a little bit one note um can be a bit of a panto villain one sometimes note. missy missy exists yeah missy Yay! exists. Oh, i love missy but the I daleks are so iconic they can they can take a week off you know yeah. like they they will stick around forever the cybermen and the master you need the odd reminder every once in a while so mm. i don't think they should be retired for 10 years well i don't know to be fair with, with, with the cybermen I've always found, especially, you know, with that series five to seven, and then every finale since then with them cropping up, maybe retire them, or as a cheeky little leeway, with a potential more adult spin-off, we could do some body horror with them, like maybe in the unit spin-off. Exactly, that's why they shouldn't take exactly. time off. Exactly, they shouldn't uh, you're take time off. Us you're taking a break from Doctor Who, <laughs> but the, the Cybermen have only, had, have only had like a couple of really, really, really good stories yeah. in New Who. They need a chance to shine out of the shadow of the Master, like you said. The Master's the thing that always wow. brings or the, the Cybermen down. And I, I think 
taking the master out of it, giving the Cybermen a bit of time to shine, and also just moving away from, from Time, time Lord stuff for a little while is going to be beneficial for the master. But if you take the master out of the equation, what's going to be like the next big cliffhanger? Because let's be honest, a the lot Rani. of the Rani. The Rani. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the Toy Rani. Maker. I know that's not a Time Lord, but it's on the same veins as big, weird stuff. Just bring in a new character. Bring someone new in. True. I, w I mean, I would love to see that. I would love to see, like, you know, a new Time Lord character created. Like, there's ruins. Order, oh, order. Ruins. Stop. Oh, you're taking right. orders. I'll have a 10 piece chicken nugget. <laughs> So, okay, this is where you're going to help me now, everyone, okay? If you think that Nerd Den Jack's argument was best, please give a cheer now. Yay! It's a good start. Good Very start. good start. That is solid. If you <laughs> think that Josh Carr's argument was best, give a cheer now. Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, he's one. He's one. That Don't is very, that. that is very good. Down with the Harris, master. If you think that Jack Reeves' performance was best, give a cheer now. Oh, that was oh, me. That's oh, oh. That was me, oh. absolutely. I think we know who won that. I, I do think that actually, Josh, I'm very sorry. I wasn't expecting it. I think that means that Jack is going to go through to the final Excuse round. Excuse me? So I've been Jack, robbed. Hello. Daylight Good news. Robbery. You get to sit this round out. Oh, do I? Yay. Yes. So this is going to be a two-on-two -two fight this time. Josh and Jack Nerden are going to fight to see if they go into a final round with Jack to win the wonderful okay. Gold David Tennant and Golden Is this the, the physical Johnson. fight? No, this is oh. not the physical This fight. is the mud wrestling, yeah. <laughs> Bring out the mud! <laughs> so, next question is up on the board, as you can see. Which previous Doctor should have returned instead of David Tennant as the 14th Doctor for the 60th anniversary? Lenny Henry! Uh -huh. you, you don't have an answer this round. Remember, you can sit it out. Ruined. Right? Good. Right. Josh, as soon yes. as I went to Jack first on the first round, you can go first this round. Who is your pick for 14th Doctor? Paul McGann. Yeah, that's a shout. That's a shout. Very, very popular choice. Your 20 seconds start now. Paul McGann didn't get enough time as the 8th Doctor, and I feel like bringing back a Doctor that's very already very popular and has already had three series and is in all of the expanded media is, is a bit of a kick in the teeth to the Doctor that's not had enough screen time. So bring him back as an all-new incarnation. We know that he can play many different types of Doctor, and my God, stop, he's lovely stop. to look at. Lovely. I, I quite agree with that final point. Oh, yes. Of course you do. I'm sure many people here as well do as well. Right. Jack. Hello. Who is your pick for 14th Doctor then? Joe Martin. Oh, <laughs> this, this, the stakes just raised very much so, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Jack, you have 20 seconds starting now. Joe Martin just deserves more screen time. She was amazing in Fugitive of the Jadoon. She was amazing in her cameo appearances uh, in Series 12 and The Power of the Doctor. She just needs more time to shine. And if she doesn't get a spin-off series, I would love to see her be the 14th Doctor and own at least one series. I know that's your time up there. Woohoo. Very well put. Right, boys, your two minutes begins now. Right. Do you want to start this, Josh? No, you go. Okay. So <laughs> I think Joe Martin would just be amazeballs because I know Paul McGann, yeah, he's had limited screen time, but he's also made a few comebacks. You know, he's had his own mini sode. He's had his Power of the Doctor plug in, which was still longer than Joe Martin's. So I feel like Joe Martin getting at least one series to shine, or the special, sorry, as the 14th Doctor, that would be pretty cool. And as well, you could wrap up the Timeless Child story arc in a roundabout way as well. Yeah, but Paul McGann, bringing Paul McGann back is the perfect like midpoint in Doctor Who yeah. to bring it back because you can go on to celebrate classic Who from there. You can, in sort of a similar way that the War Doctor acted in Day of the Doctor as the bridge between classic and new. Yeah. That's that Paul McGann sort of at that point as well. Um, and also... You said about the timeless child arc. Yeah. I I think you could do time you could do time war stuff, and time war stuff is going to be much much more popular and more exciting for a 60th anniversary to to kick things off. I think the timeless child we've had a lot of it over the past few years, and I think Paul McGann would offer something different. And also, he's a fantastic actor 
that could do something different with the Doctor every time he turns up. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I get the point about the time. Do you concede the point then? Okay, oh, oh, I, oh, I, I win. No, I, okay, that's I'll it, I get it. <laughs> but Joe Martin, you know, sh like she still is technically a fresh face, very much so of a fresh face that we've barely tapped into that potential that is just seething at the surface that I feel like, oh, that, that would be really cool to see in the 60th mm. anniversary alongside but, some former But also doctors. bringing Paul McGann means that you can bring in so much of that great stuff from Big Finish. And you can bring in characters from Big Finish. You can canonize extended universe stuff. And there we and are. And there's done. your time. Yeah, very good. Very good. I didn't have to this shout all tough. that time. I've got my answer. <laughs> that's, I'm that's, going into the audience. That's usually my line. This is tough. My goodness. Right. Um, okay, then. It's. I'm glad I'm not judging this one, I tell oh you boy. now. Um, if you think that Josh's pick of Paul McGann is the best answer, please, or sorry, best <laughs> argument. If you think his argument was best, that's what we're judging it on. Please cheer now. <laughs> A very respectable cheer there. If you think that Jack's answer of Joe Martin, or sorry, his argument was best, please cheer now. Woo! Yes! Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. I've been I battered. <laughs> I was... <laughs> this is a turn up for the books. I, in my mind, I had you going right to the end, Josh. I'm very this, this sorry. This is my villain origin story yeah. right here. <laughs> I'm very I'm sorry. I'm the master now. I've come full circle. I'm sorry, <laughs> Josh. Well, time to take a 10-year break. <laughs> this, this does mean that, and I say this with love and respect, you are a fake fan now. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Checks out. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and that does mean that Jack Nerden and Jack Reeves are going to go to our final round together, and they're going to face off talking about what is the best Doctor Who anniversary special. Right. Here we go. Tell you what, let's stand up for this one. Oh, okay. Two anyway. Oh, here, we oh, here we go. We go. Uh, Scum. Epic oh. rap battles of history. This is like a boxing weigh-in. <laughs> Square up to each other. <laughs> okay. So, um, I guess I'm going to come to you, Jack, seeing as you're on the first round. Hi. What is your pick for best anniversary special? Take a wild guess. Day of the Doctor. It Woo! Ooh. Popular choice. Your 20 seconds start now. I mean, what, uh, yes, it doesn't indeed include a lot of classic Who. I'm going to get that out of the way. But what it does do is perfectly summate all of from RTD just Moffat, and what would even later become with Chibnall. It is beautifully made, beautifully directed as well. The acting is superb across the board. Yes, Paul McGann could Stop. have been in it. <laughs> uh, oh. That was not a good oh. start. Uh, you might pull it back, you never know. Over to you, Jack. What is your pick? The Five Doctors. Oh. Uh -oh. Classic Who <laughs> fans will be very happy with that one. And your 20 seconds starts now. Well, you know, there's a lot of representation from many parts of the classic era, from the first Doctor to the fifth Doctor. You know, we've got Richard Herndl being the first actor to play a different version of the first Doctor. We had the Yeti, we had the Cybermen, we had the Master, we had a brief appearance of the Daleks, Time Lords. There was a lot going. And that's your time. Okay. That was, that was, that was timed perfectly, Jack. Well oh, done. thank you. Oh, good. And for the final time, to decide who our winner is, fight! Me in the middle. All right. Okay. So, Day of the Doctor, why is the five Doctors better? Give me one reason. Patrick Troughton. <laughs> <laughs> but does yours have David Ending Tennant, now. Matt Ending Smith, now. and John Hurt, the Would triple threat? I mean, Actually, technically, Troughton is in that one, in Day of the Doctor. True. In fact, all of them are. That's a reach. But Shut also, <laughs> mine has fight. reused scenes from Sharda for Tom Baker and... That's, not a, that's not a sell. You, oh, you had yeah, to reuse Shard footage. Like, like, oh, oh, ours was all 100% sorted. I'm pretty sure Day of the Doctor reuses footage as well, though. Oh, so. Excuse me, Josh. <laughs> is it your time fight. to talk? Is it his time <laughs> to talk? If I'm going no, down, not. you're coming down with me. <laughs> oh. But, I mean, Day of the Doctor, yes. It is not the best with classic Who representation. Yep. I will give you that. However, again, from RTD through to Moffat, it is a perfect summation of all that era and a fantastic era at that. Classic series, it has a lot of fan service, but it doesn't tell a very good story. The story of the five doctors is five men walk into a castle. They win. <laughs> but wow, it is thrilling. very beautifully done. 
very beautifully done. Thank like, you. I liked we, my prance. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, very swaying with the story, but I'm also distracting him. we've got, you know, we've got loads of Time Lord lore. You know, we get brief glimpses of the Time War in Day of the Doctor, but with the five Doctors, we're in the death zone, baby. I'm glad the Time War isn't in it, though, because if you film the Time War, it makes it less interesting than it is just to imagine. So just seeing some Daleks blown up, that's good for me, my man. The parts that I saw did make it less awesome for me. Was that supposed to be a zinger because the crowd didn't hear it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the parts of the Day of the Doctor that you know had the Time War in, it kind of killed the Time War for me personally. Well, not for me. I think it's great. <laughs> uh, but to wrap it up, we had Patrick Troughton, Fraser Hines, Elizabeth Sladen as well. So, you know, Sarah Jane for life. And, and that's, that's a lovely point to end on, because that is time for that. You, you didn't use the Raston Warrior robot wildcard. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. oh, the, the winner. Oh. That would, yeah, winner that would have been a real slam dunk. You Be know. kind, my friends. Be uh. kind. Okay, then. So for the final time, and deciding who wins Golden David Tennant and Golden The Rock, if you think that Jack Reeves' argument was best, please cheer now. Uh. I love you. Yes. That's respectable. If you think that Jack's nerd den argument was best, please cheer now. Yes! yes! Whoa! I didn't even want it. I didn't even want that doll. It <laughs> <laughs> well, how, Jack how, Reeves. How's Dwayne The Rock Johnson done us for a second time? <laughs> well, this was a plot twist. <laughs> Jack Reeves, you are a fake fan. Yeah, I know. Ouch. Okay. Jack, congratulations, <laughs> you, you are not only top Doctor Who fan of oh, MCM Comic Con, you. you are also the winner of the Golden David Tennant oh. and the Golden Dwayne The Rock yes. Johnson. <laughs> Mama made it. Woo! <laughs> and now, my friends, we move on to the second to last segment. Also, have a think of questions now you may wish to ask Doctor Who related, of course. And if you have a question, head over to the microphone just over there, as it's usually the way, and get ready. But before that, Mr. Josh Carr, explain what we're going to do. So, I uh, host a, a podcast called Who Knew, a Doctor Who podcast, Woo! where I interview wonderful people from in and around the world of Doctor Who uh, about, their sh about the show, about their time on the show, if they have been on it. And sometimes I speak to people like Jack Reeves. I'm so sorry. In, in an act of <laughs> charity, more than anything. Um, okay. <laughs> but we, we've got a couple of features on the show. Um, one of the main ones is The Corridor of Fame, um, which we, ha we do have a little graphic for, I believe. There we go. That's the, there we go. There the Corridor we go. of Fame. Beautiful. There it is. Um, so The Corridor of Fame is basically a hall of fame for Doctor Who, where each of my guests submit someone to, to join the corridor. So there's loads of people. All of the Doctors are already in. Uh, you've got Elizabeth Sladen in there. Woo! You've got Janet Woo! Fielding. You've got Stephen Moffat. Um, so with, there's loads of names in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little, a little competition. These three have picks uh, for people to enter the Corridor of Fame. And again, we're going to do a little cheering system and see who deserves to go in. So, Jack, again, doesn't narrow it down, but I'm going to go to <laughs> you first. Who would you like to submit to the Corridor of Fame? The much-loved Peter Capaldi companion, Pearl Mackey. Oh, great pick. That's a good one. Yes. Great pick. Why, why do you want to put Pearl in the Corridor of Fame? Because she's just so nice. She seems like such a nice person. I mean, first of all, I was just happy to see Clara go personally. I don't know if that will turn the Ooh. tides here. But <laughs> when Bill came Ooh. along, Series 10 as a whole just felt like such a breath of fresh air. And all in no small part due to Bill, who I really didn't think I would like. When the first initial teaser came out in the first episode, I was like, oh, she likes serving chips and stuff. All right, good for you. But... As the series went on, I fell in love with her and then cried when she died. Oh, my God. But, yes, Pearl Mackey, please. Great pick. Great But What do you two think about Pearl Mackey? Great pick. I have to agree. Absolutely. You know, Bill's my probably my favorite New Who companion. So, Ooh. yeah, I know. mean, Pearl's up there for me as well. And mm. also because she had one of the strongest exit stories as well. Yes. yes. Definitely. It's a nice mm. it's a nice self-contained story in series 10. Even though I would have liked to have seen more of her, I, I think yeah. it, it is wrapped up neatly. It is, I, yeah. I think as well, the fact that Bill was a lesbian companion for representation, it was just, 
I mean, it's what we should be having all the way through the show. You I know? like how this group of people is currently talking about representation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the whitest panel you've ever seen. <laughs> Three the Jacks and a Josh. Panel you've ever seen. Apologies. Um, Jack, who would you like to submit to the Corridor of Fame? Ella Watts, creator and director of Doctor Who Redacted. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Great. Good one. great. For, for people that don't know, uh, Doctor Who Redacted is a uh, scripted audio drama podcast which was put out through BBC Sounds last year with the main focus being very gay, very trans. And as a story, it's not only wonderful, but it is exactly that. And it's giving that injection of just diversity and inclusion and everything that we should be celebrating as a fandom. And it's inherent to Doctor Who, so it's something we should be seeing all the time. And that's all due to Ella, who unfortunately we know isn't returning for series two of mm -hmm. uh, Doctor Who Redacted. Yeah. But I think that in the initial output of Doctor Who Redacted, she was, even though she was the creator and the director, she was very much an unsung hero. So I feel that, and especially after listening to her on your podcast as well, Josh. No, thank you for the plug. Yeah. <laughs> Which was an excellent episode, I have to say, one of my favorites. I, I felt that she's so worthy of going into that Hall of Fame and should so be celebrated as one of the icons of Doctor Who's history. Yeah. I completely agree. Like I said, when I had her on and we, we spoke about Redacted, it, it's so clear that that whole show, which is amazing, um, you know, it, it's, it's such a brilliant idea. Um, and it's all from her. It all came from her brain. She created it. She produced it. She directed it. Um, she got all of the people on board. And the fact she's not returning for Series 2 does put a little bit of, a, little bit of a damp squib on it for, for me. But... Um, yeah, what, what do you two think? Did you Have you listened to Redacted? Me personally, no. I'm just sort of on the outside for the audio space, so I was keeping <laughs> quiet. But thank you for, put, for throwing no, it to no, me. No, that's <laughs> fine. Have you listened to it? Yeah, I have, yeah. And I, what one thing I liked about Redacted is that it acted as like sequels of like Doctor Who episodes mm. that you never expected to get sequels, like Smith and & Jones and... You know, yeah. but even the Bannerman Road Gang as well, which I thought was very innovative, yeah. something that you know hasn't been done before, mm -hmm. and yeah, it was, it was just a really unique idea. Yeah, really. the fan the fan service in it is really nice oh. and not too yeah. heavy and in your face, but it's really nicely handled. Mm -hmm. um, Jack, okay, our last entry. Who would you like to submit to the Corridor of Fame? Mine is Annette Badland. Ooh, oh, yes. great one. Wonderful. So obviously Margaret, Margaret the Slovene yep. from series one. Bon what? Bell Botch Passamir de Slovene. Oh, well, you rehearsed that. He even that. brought the name. He brought the name. How many times have you done that in front of the mirror before coming here today? <laughs> Not enough, but I'm glad I remembered it. <laughs> so what, why would you like to submit Annette Badlands? Because I love her in the series one episodes, uh, Aliens in London, World War Three, and Boomtown. Boom. They're a tremendous trilogy of episodes. The Slovene are incredibly underrated. And, you know, I, I like the aspect of in the two-parter, you know, she was a very family-orientated person. You know, she had her goals alongside her family. They wanted to dominate the earth, crush it. And then in Boomtown, she's isolated. She's a completely different character. She is so selfish, but then she starts to become human because she spent so much time in that skin. Mm -hmm. that she kind of forgot who she is. And then there's that nice little redemption arc at the end, and uh, Annette's acting there, it, is just, it just flourishes. Yeah. And, I, I and the, the, the scenes with her and her and Eccleston are oh. top tier. Like, in the restaurant, that's, that's like one of my favourite bits. It's in the best part of the movie. episode. It is one of my oh, favourite parts of series one. Oh, my God. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, so that's our picks. Um, I feel cruel not giving it to, to one of you, but, I mean, why not, anyway? <laughs> Who thinks that Pearl Mackey deserves to be in the Corridor of Fame? That's quite good. That's quite good. Who thinks that Ella Watts deserves to be in the Corridor of Fame? Oh. That was okay. low. Okay. But who thinks that Annette Badland deserves to be in the Corridor of Fame? Okay. okay. Who thinks, because it's all about celebrating the 60th anniversary, and I definitely wasn't always going to do this anyway. Who thinks I should put all three in the corridor Woo! of fame? And be the let's one time I win. Three. Yeah, let's put all three <laughs> in anyway. So um, 
yeah, they're all in the corridor of fame, Brilliant. and they all deserve to be celebrated. And um, if you want to hear more of that, we do that all the time on Who Knew. So fantastic. And now, of course, we have some questions, and we are going to speedily answer, my friends, because we are running low on time. So, okay. first person, what's your question? Hi. Uh, in the initial promotion for the next series, which shoot the girl were, uh, when we first saw him, we saw that costume of his. As more photos have been leaked and, or even officially released or whatnot, you've seen multiple different costumes, which I'm not even going to say variants because they're significantly different. Now, according to a guy I was talking to, the Project Dalek, there's actually, I don't know how he knows this is true, but um, supposedly there's two reasons why for this. One, Disney money, and two, merchandising. So if that's yeah. true, how do you feel about nice the idea? Nice wholesome reasons there. How, oh. how do you feel about the idea of having what is effectively a, a multi-costumed, the first multi-costumed Doctor, and alternatively, maybe the Americanization of sorts of Doctor, or Disneyfication of Doctor, if any of this is true? I mean, I love the really popped version. off today, yeah. sis. Yeah, di oh. <laughs> different versions, I think, are excellent. Whether I will, It's yet to be seen whether Disney has a massive strangle of Russell T. Davis, whether they've got him by the throat. What do you guys think? I agree. I feel sorry for all cosplayers and, and character their bank options. Accounts. Poor Dominic. Yeah. Yeah. Character <laughs> options are in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, all of the costumes have been amazing so far. So I'm very, very excited to see all of them in action and hopefully a few more. Why not? Jack Alexander? Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely, I think it's fantastic. I, I, I agree. It's We can't quite say just how much Disney are involved at the minute. You know, it's. May, you know, I, I think maybe there's definitely a budget increase, but well, that's just from Bad Wolf themselves anyway, and deals there happening. We're not sure, but yeah, I'm loving everything. Everything we see is shooting. I'm yeah. absolutely loving. So yeah, fantastic. Nerdin. Yeah, I'm I'm loving all what I'm seeing as well. But the one thing that I'm hoping for with all these suits is I want to see more of Doctor Who pop figures. That's what yes. I want to see. Bring them okay. Beat the all. meat pop figure, please. Yes. yes, please. Thank you very much for your question. Next question. The flag. Uh, hello. Uh, I, you've probably been asked this before, but I know it's controversial, but uh, how do you feel about the Timeless Child episode? Like Timeless Child? Yay. Let's go yay or nay to Timeless Child, just as a concept. Nerd Den. Yay. <laughs> Jack Alexander. Yay. Josh Carr. Yay. Nay. Ish. Thank oh. you for your question, though. Fantastic. Okay. Next question. Hello, Jack, Jack and Josh. How are you guys? We're so good. Amazing. Fantastic. Yes. As in the Star Beast, we're going to be getting Beep the Meep and the Waff. Waff. And the, uh, the West, the Warrior Robots. Yes. Do you think we're going to be seeing any more comic companions such as Frobisher or Josephine Day or Shane? Bring back Frobisher. Oh, oh hell, the yes. big talking birds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want Frobisher. Or who do you guys want? Like I, I want Frobisher. Just Frobisher. Just yeah. Frobisher. Honestly, get rid of the Doctor. Get rid of the Companions. <laughs> get rid of the Master. Crime and solving all of, penguin. Just give me Frobisher. Frobisher I think we're all in agreement here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Frobisher. Frobisher. Especially with the Disney budget as well. Yeah. Frobisher spin off? Yeah. Oh. Hell yeah. Ooh. Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Just give me a big talking penguin. That's just in general, just yeah. in life. Oh, I mean, yeah. And as well, if we're reaching into the EU and getting things in the comics, let's get some stuff from Big Finish as well. Let's have some Big Finish companions. Yeah, Big Finish. Charlie, anyone? anyone oh, Charlie, Charlie Pollard, Pollard, yes. Pollard, that would yeah, be amazing. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for your question. Next question, my friend. Well, my question was going to be very much along those lines of <laughs> what from the expanded media do you want to see in? So I'll change it slightly and say, um, what would you like to see from Doctor Who? What's the most ridiculous thing you'd like to see, which is absolutely not going to happen, but you still want it? All Doctors sharing an entire episode together. Like, there's a bunch of them online, like the 10 Doctors by Batman March and the upcoming uh, Timeless Doctors, which looks spectacular. But I want to see... It's never going to happen for so many reasons. We'd need to go and dig up Patrick Troughton. Mainly that, yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm not bold enough to do that personally. But just no. that as an idea is inherently fun to me. You guys? Um, I'm going to go quite, I don't know if this is controversial, because um, I think it's never going to happen, but I'd quite like them to just spin off the Sonic completely. I'm sorry. Spin off the Sonic. Yeah, get rid. But think of the merchandising. I Disney know. will kill you. Capitalism really Mickey Mouse will come for you. <laughs> it's a, it, no, it's a good idea. What else are they going to sell me? I'd like to see the... Uh, the world of fiction, uh, or the, uh, the, you know, from yeah. the... Time the, the uh, yeah, the, the world of fiction return and have Super Hulock happen. 
No. Oh well, listen to the silence there. Yeah, that ship has sailed I from know. Tumblr. <laughs> that's, you really that's, went that's, that's for the Tumblr, Tumblr fans, that, one, that you is. <laughs> you know what? For a weird thing for Doctor Who to do, I would like to see them do, I know they've only done it recently, but I would like to see them do one massive um, ongoing story arc for a series. But we'll, instead of six episodes, do eight or nine or something like that. I think that would yeah. be pretty cool for them to do. Cool, yeah. no, good ideas all around. And thank you very much thank for your you. question. Next up, your question. Hello. Hello. Firstly, I have to say I was disappointed when you talked about Barbie graphics, and I didn't see something that said, this Barbie is a doctor. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'll live. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask about... Um, I just, I've been wanting there to be Doctor Who open auditions for my entire life. Hasn't happened. So... The quick question is, Doctor Who open auditions, yes or no? What do you think about if that was a thing? I'm not sure. Any thoughts? I'm all in. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You want to be the along. doctor? Josh Carr doctor? Yeah, I'd go dressed as Frobisher, <laughs> <laughs> dressed as a big penguin, and just say I'll only be cast as Frobisher. No, excellent. I mean, it's a very Frobisher and Beat the Meep centric panel, and mm. good. <laughs> Jack Alexander. I, yeah, I, I'd like to see it happen because I think it could be. Sometimes there are people who uh, wouldn't necessarily get that opportunity unless they have that there. Who could be amazing? You know, you look at you look at some of they, they did with Force Awakens back in the day when they held open auditions for that. They had hundreds and thousands of people go for that, and I think they picked a couple from that even, which is just yeah, give people a chance. I think yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I think that being a, a thing would be really cool and uh, as you said Jack as well like you know it would give more people a chance to you know be a part of the show I think that would be amazing and very innovative. Oh, positive all around. Thank you. No, uh, thank I have you. one last question which is about your experience in Doctor Who fandom. I see all sides on Twitter because it's Twitter. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so I was wondering about how you found um, Doctor Who fandom personally. It's just mixed. It, it, it's such a big fandom that you're going to see a wide range of people with a mm -hmm. wide range of views. Maybe less so here, but unfortunately, the fandom is too big to not have a few bad eggs. Yeah, um, I, I love it for for what it is. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm definitely you know when drama kicks off and, and all of that, I duck out very quickly and try not to get involved anymore. Um, but yeah, I I think it's a, a really really nice place if you just try and stay on the nice side of it. <laughs> you know, don't dive too deep into the dark bits. Yes. And quickly, I, you guys. with drama and things like that, I usually judge it by if I told my wife this. Is she going to say, oh, yeah, that's real drama, or this is silly? Who, by the way, my wife is here, and it's <laughs> our wedding anniversary. <laughs> so please, uh, please thank her with me, because it's our wedding anniversary. She's chosen to be here with all of us. So, yeah, thank you, Jodie. And lastly, nice and quick. Yeah, um, I've, I've had a mainly a positive experience with, you know, the Doctor Who fandom on Twitter. However, just as like as you two have said, you know, there's a fair bit of drama and it is best to stay out of it, you know, because at the end of the day, is it really worth, you know, saying something that you, that you wouldn't say to someone face to face, you know, just one of them. So we don't have a lot of thank time. Thank you. But thank you for your question. No I think we have time for two more. So I'm very, very sorry, my friends. I am very, very sorry. But the con will close in like 10 minutes. Much love to you, though. Nice and quick. Do you think Beat the Meep will return after the 60th anniversary? Yes. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you for your question. And last Thank but not you. least, you are welcome. If you could pick uh, one doctor and one companion from any series to combine into one whole, what would it be? Eccleston and Donna. Ooh. Um, Eccleston and Vicky. Oh, that's, I like that. Tenant and Ace. Oh, nice. <laughs> and Tenant and Amy. Oh, Ooh. yes, yes. Like nice. That'd be a very horny like TARDIS. <laughs> 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 and that is it, my friends. Thank you very much for coming. Get home nice and Thank safe. You, Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.